The Heinemann Podcast is a production of Heinemann Publishing. Heinemann is a provider of resources written by real teachers for real classrooms. Heinemann values teachers as decision makers and students as curious learners. Discover the path to lifelong professional learning at Heinemann.com. Heinemann, dedicated to teachers. I'm Brad from Heinemann. On today's podcast, Making the Journey. It's not often your favorite author asks you to co-write their next book, but that's exactly what happened to Ken Lindbaum when he met Leela Christianberry. Ken was telling Leela how influential Making the Journey had been to him when he started his teaching career and then his education students. Leela suggested that with the right partner, a new addition might be possible, and from there, the duo teamed up. Leela and Ken's timeless advice, humorous anecdotes, and stories of successes and failures influenced the fourth edition of Making the Journey with Life and Light. They instill confidence in soon-to-be English teachers, and that's where we started our conversation. I wanted to know what new changes were in the book and how those changes impact today's teacher. I think one of the biggest changes is the presence of media. We've certainly seen media's power and changing platforms for a long while. But in the years since the third edition and the fourth edition, media has truly exploded. The use of Twitter, the use of social media, entrance into schools, uh, into the curriculum, uh, has really been something that I don't think any of us anticipated. And I don't think it's represented, it couldn't be represented in, in the um, third edition, but I think it is represented in the fourth edition. And I, I certainly would say that one of the best things about the fourth edition is Ken's presence, because this is a, an area with which he's very comfortable. And I think he the parts in the fourth edition of Making the Journey that Ken has written really provide a lot of support for teachers and also um, really make clear the context of social media and and media in uh, teacher preparation and also for novice teachers. I do. Yeah, I, I, Lila, you're exactly right, especially about the platforms. Um, you know, it wasn't that long ago that texting was brand new and seemed like a passing fad, frankly. And teachers were mer- most worried about the fact that texting language was interfering with the way the students were using standardized English. That was right. an enormous fight that we barely hear anymore. Right. But then Twitter and Facebook um, really started to change the way that students talk to each other. Snapchat, um, Instagram. Tumblr. Right, Tumblr, the blogging right. program. I mean, right. there's a lot of ways that students are talking to each other now powerful, important ways that have impact. Um, and now it's well beyond young people. Mm-hmm. Now, now it's the entire globe speaking to each other using these platforms. And they're very different in terms of the kind of information that people share with them, the amount of information they can share, the linking possibilities, the use of memes, the use of infographics. So all of this has gotten tremendously complicated. So there was a point where I think English teachers thought, this isn't real discourse, so we can leave it outside the classroom. Absolutely. It is clearly real discourse, right. and it has a place in the classroom. And that kind of media is, is very important, and we need to engage students in critical study of it and, and the ability to use it effectively and right. hopefully for good. But in addition to those platforms, now collaboration software has gotten very ubiquitous and people are writing together much, much more than they used to because of things like Google Drive um, and similar programs, uh, WordPress blogs, other platforms that allow people to write together on one particular document. Uh, VoiceThread is another. And these are all um, ways that students can easily collaborate with each other on their writing. So it's not just a fear of a different kind of discourse or even an embracing of a different kind of a discourse. But the way we compose discourse is is radically changing just over the last six, seven years. Absolutely. And I think it's across generations. I mean, students, their parents, their grandparents are participating yeah. in all of this. So this is a really universal kind of, of facility. I mean, there was, there was one point where school divisions put regularly in their curriculum, um, it was important that students know how to create their own web pages. Well, that just yeah. seems like the bustle and the hobble skirt. And uh, let's let's get into the Model T. I mean, that that is so, we are so beyond that. And I, I think if we think about the context of teaching English and language, regimes across the world 
have fallen or have been threatened Correct. through uh, Twitter and social media. Uh, people in developing countries who don't have really reliable paved roads or um, uh, food sources have smartphones, and that's another thing. I don't know why you didn't. Me- I don't know why you didn't mention that. I'm I'm going to be real smart and talk about smartphones. Okay, great. Too. And who Let's would ha- would have thought that smartphones would be um, in in the classroom in the way that they are? Right. And it's not just that it's it's convenient for cash-strapped school divisions, the fact that kids will bring their own smartphones, and of course then that's another issue with access. Right, but absolutely. if they can bring their smartphones, these devices are doing things, for example, that uh, handheld calculators did, what, 25 years ago for our math right. brothers and sisters with uh, Texas Instruments. Mm-hmm. And so with smartphones, I mean, we can do so much with language. So. Another, that, that's uh, been amazing. Yeah, yeah. Another big what? difference that this is bringing for mm-hmm. students is we now have young children writing to the world. That's right. That's right. And, and that didn't happen. And doing earlier. video along Correct. with their writing. Yeah, we've been talking about <clears throat> yeah. writing. There's, there's still oral discourse, right. there's videos, right. there's Skyping. There's, that's right. So, I mean, th- this has been a, a revolution. Mm-hmm. In the newest version of Making the Journey, we've tried to mm-hmm. infuse ideas about these kinds of media throughout the entire text. So. Right. There was in the earlier drafts of this book, we thought we would have one chapter on media and technology in the classroom yes. or enhancing your teaching with technology. And we mm-hmm. realized along the way that technology was in every chapter, all over the place. Mm-hmm. And it didn't make sense to just have one chapter on technology, mostly right. because it would quickly become obsolete. Right. Because technology moves so quickly. But the ways in which technology can undergird literacy instruction, I think, is going to be sustainable and somewhat timeless. So so that's where we focused. And right. so media runs through the book. Right. In, in Absolutely. Absolutely. I think another thing that's changed from the third edition to the fourth edition is this consistent pressure on early career teachers. Mm. Um, the issues of uh, retention and attrition are really with us. I think at one point the conversation was that there were so many teachers who were getting ready to retire. And so we simply needed to bring more people into the pipeline. The sort of image that's being used now is not bringing people into the pipeline, but a, a leaky bucket. We fill the bucket and then it leaks out. And the percentages on early career teachers who leave in the first three and then first five years is absolutely daunting. And so I think really for the fourth edition, one of the things we're talking about is acquiring the skills and the confidence and also understanding who you are as a human being, a language learner, uh, an intelligent person. And this will sustain you uh, as you teach in the classroom and as you go through some really great days, and we love those great days, Mm -hmm but a lot of bad days, too. So one of the things that Leela and I loved about the book was the design of it, right? And, mm-hmm. and the cover just yeah. blew us both away. And yeah. we really love uh, the roller coaster uh, imagery throughout mm-hmm. on the cover and then throughout the book. There was one point where we talked about, is this too scary, that this roller coaster going in all right. so many directions? Right. And I think the answer we came to is yes, but it's also right. somewhat <laughs> accurate. So, Absolutely. And every chapter begins with a different visual of that kind of a roller coaster. And, and frankly, it's not a bad image for what teachers really go through. But mm-hmm. the ones who stick with it really, really do well. And the ones who decide to stop and get off, that's okay too. Yes, it is. But what we're trying to do in the book is provide a sense of veteran colleagues who are there supporting the teachers mm-hmm. and, and helping them along. Uh, and I think something we do particularly well uh, is point out our own failings That's along right. the way. That's and, right. and tell some of our own cringeworthy stories <laughs> and some of our sad stories and upsetting mm-hmm. stories, but also some funny stories, we hope. Absolutely. And uh, as a way to show our readers that, you know, every good teacher has been a horrible teacher and an inept teacher in different moments. And that's right. what really makes you a good veteran teacher is that you come back from it. Right. And so I, I think that's something we try to do throughout the book. Very much so. And another thing is that all of us have had students who have really touched our lives. And that doesn't mean that we've always been successful with those students. But they have been in our space. We have been in their space for a significant period of time. And how did we interact with them? And was it successful? What did they need from us that we could give them or couldn't give them? 
And those students, and again, they're not all success stories, I think is a big part of the intimacy of teaching, the emotionality of teaching, the great reward of teaching, and probably, uh, as much as anything, this is a serious business. We, we do laugh. I mean, yeah. you've got to. And, and, and students Mostly always... Mostly at me. Na- no, I'm students happy to play always the role. <laughs> make, us, make us laugh. But, you know, at, at the end of it all, uh, this is a young person's life. And uh, they're there with us. And, and what can we help create in, in that classroom and in that school that's really going to uh, be useful for them. So speaking um, of early career teachers, another yes. thing that's very new um, in the book is addressing things like the Common Core State Standards right. and the, the push toward a, a national a national standard and frankly what I think you know some see right. as a national curriculum. Right. Even, even though that's uh, stated as not behind right. the Common mm-hmm. Core, I think many of us believe that it certainly is and, and right. it, it was intended to be. Uh, regardless, the Common Core is here. We, we, tr- we actually, as we were writing the book, were starting to anticipate quite a bit of pushback mm-hmm. on Common Core standards. So, um, but we, we think the idea of college and career-ready standards are here to stay. Right. And so regardless of whether or not a particular state uses Common right. Core, we're all moving towards so-called college and career standards. So we've worked that into the chapters on planning and into the chapters on writing and reading. So in the reading chapter, we're looking much more closely at teaching complex text, and we're looking at an informational using text. informational right. texts right. in the classroom in creative right. and useful ways. In the mm-hmm. writing chapter, we're mm-hmm. focusing more heavily on argument. Mm-hmm. We left a chapter. Um, we thought we might cut out the chapter on questioning from Leela's <laughs> earlier versions, but no. Common Core <laughs> is is very interested. Uh, it's very supportive of having teachers. Right question students so that students are doing most of the thinking and the talking out loud, which mm-hmm. is something that we support and Leela's supported in her, in her books from the beginning. Right. So we left that in there and updated it, of course, right. that that's there. And we're also looking at uh, ways to help early career teachers and others deal with standardized exams. You know, so the Pacing guides. Pacing guides oh, for heavens. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and even ed TPA, which is something that... Right. Um, or pre-service teachers in most states now have to deal with or will have to deal with pretty soon. Right. Ken, you're, you're new in this edition. It, the previous editions were, were yours, and, and right. you've, you've joined for the fourth edition. When you approached it, what, what were you thinking? What were you... I don't mean... What, what were, were you thinking? thinking? I mean, oh, like my that. gosh. So, so I, I love telling how this happened. Lauren Audet asked me to write a blog for Heinemann, which I was very happy to do, and telling the origin story of the fourth mm-hmm. edition. Mm-hmm. And I have to tell you that... Um, I was, I started teaching in 1988. The first Making the Journey came out in 90 or 92? 94. Okay. 94. 94. So, so I was, I was an early career teacher myself, but I had not been exposed to a book like that in my own, uh, teacher education. It wasn't available yet. Mm -hmm. And no other book was like Leela's because Leela's Mm -hmm. was conversational. It Mm -hmm. was very reader friendly. It was having a veteran colleague speaking just to me and telling me things that she wouldn't tell everybody else. That's how it felt when I read the book. So I became a teacher educator myself over years. Uh, I even got to know Leela because when I became English Journal editor, Leela had been English Journal editor previously, and she'd Mm -hmm. been so supportive and helpful and and knew what it was like to be editor before I did. And she was there even before she... I knew she would need me. She knew I would need her. (laughs) Right? I don't know. Yeah. And so then... Then then, uh, that... That developed. So it was just uh, in uh, at the NCT 2014 secondary section mm-hmm. lunch. That's right. I had mentioned to Leela, listen, your book uh, was last published in 2006. There's been Common Core, so many changes in technology and other things. My students still want to read your book because they love the way she <laughs> describes literature and the way she talks. When are you putting out a fourth edition? And Leela said, oh, I don't think so. Uh, I don't really think I have the time. I can't do that. I And... So, okay, I thought of that. And then she turned back to me and said, you know, if I had a good co-author, I might do it. And I should have just hugged her and been delighted. But I, <laughs> there was part of me that said, yes, if she had a good co-author, that would be great. I hope she finds one because I wouldn't let myself Because it wouldn't be it you, meant. right. You're and so then modest. she turned around and said, Lunkhead, would you write this with me? And I said, yeah. yeah. And 
10 yeah. minutes later, we had a drafted uh, mm-hmm. new edition on a napkin. On a napkin. And we were ready to go. Absolutely. And something about Leela Christianberry, when she has a project in her head, my God, that gets done. That's right. She makes a beeline to the finish line. And That's it's right. been a... It's been a roller coaster, but a very good one. This it, has been it has been excellent downhill all the way in yeah. all the good meaning of that. Well, uh, yeah. yes, mostly it really has been. And I think one of the things you know, uh, Ken has a a different um, uh, background than I do. Um, obviously, a different gender. He comes from a different part of the world, um, and he has different stories and strengths. And I really believe in the power of difference. And I would never have wanted to partner with someone like me. I wanted to partner with someone who was somewhat different. And so he's really brought uh, a lot of verve uh, to the fourth edition and things that he's done with his students that I go, really? You tried that? Oh, wow. And we've been able to, to incorporate it in the fourth edition. So I've not had to compromise the things that I care about and the stories that I care about, but um, it's really been um, a rich experience. I think our work in English Journal made it clear to us mm-hmm. that we shared principles. That's right. So we would be compatible. Right. But one of the reasons I always use the text with my students is because Leela comes at the field as somebody who loves literature mm-hmm. and fell yeah. in love with literature first. Right. And I came to the field as someone who loved writing mm-hmm. and teaching about writing and getting my own students engaged in writing and not really creative writing. It was more about nonfiction. Mm-hmm. So we we worked very well together. Right. Um, and so it was, it was a nice partnership in that way. And I, I think our readers will see that kind of balanced approach in our conversation, and yet that love for each section of the the curriculum is still there. Absolutely. Absolutely. When you you set out to make that outline at NCTE in 2014, were there things that immediately came to mind for you that said, boy, I I wish the book really had this in there? What what were those things? Yeah, um, that's interesting. The one thing I really wanted to get in there was the idea of authentic writing assessment. Um, Leela had chapters in her earliest books that were about writing and rewriting, and that is Mm -hmm. the heart of writing instruction. But what I wanted to add was about publishing. Students should also be publishing their work Mm -hmm. so that they're writing for an audience Mm -hmm. and not just a teacher, so they can create uh, writing that, that speaks to a world outside of the classroom, literally, so they can write persuasive arguments to get rules changed in their own schools. Right. Or they can write to their, their parents or to business leaders or to politicians, or they can write to their peers. Of course, these are students, as we discussed earlier, who are, because of social media, getting more comfortable speaking with each other anyway. But I wanted to be able to expose them to many different kinds of genres in a way mm-hmm. that they would be interested in not just writing and getting everything correct, mm-hmm. but rather writing in a way that empowers them and get something actually right. done. And so adding that piece about publication mm-hmm. was really important. So when Leela and I looked at revising the chapter on writing, we the only reason we really took anything out was to make room for right. this additional kind of stuff. So it right. was compatible, but I would say it, it augmented those ideas. Absolutely. You know. And both of us agreed that we needed to talk to current English ed students, um, graduate students. And so Ken in New York and I in Virginia uh, talked to, I talked to a group of 25. How many were in your group? Maybe um, 20? I, uh, when I was teaching while, I, while right, we were writing we, the book? Yes. So I, I was working closely with two different groups that were right. about 12 and, and mm-hmm. 11. Right. Each, so close to that number. And we asked them what um, they would like to see. Uh, and in the, the group in Virginia, they were already working with uh, the third edition of Making the Journey. So uh, they were very generous. Uh, I talked to them, and then they did some anonymous writing of things that they would they would like. And Ken, you, you even did some trial uh, showed them some chapters yeah. and got some feedback. So yeah. we really think it's really important uh, because the stakes are high. Mm-hmm. Um, and regardless of how um, encouraging we can be, the idea that you're going to go out and you're going to have your own classes and you the bell's going to ring and it's you is terrifying for um, students. So what can we do to really um, make you feel like you know enough um, to have a a successful first year, second year, third year, and and on. One, one of the things that I think readers have loved about Leela's books mm. is the collection of voices in them. Mm. And so not That's only right. did we ask My our students, students yes. about 
revisions that we might make, but mm-hmm. Leela's always incorporated the stories and the voices right. of her students and colleagues that she respected mm-hmm. and people that frankly had some, you know, difficult times and Absolutely. and expressed that difficulty in quite vivid ways in the book in in a in a manner that really speaks to teacher educators and to pre-service teachers and mm-hmm. gives us a lot to talk about together. Right. The book doesn't always, those parts of the book don't always provide answers, right. but rather provide very important context for discussion in classrooms. Absolutely. And so when, when Leela asked me to join her, it was important also that I bring many other voices in as mm-hmm. well. So so there are some, mm-hmm. some older stories from the older volumes. There are some new stories that Leela collected from teachers and students of hers. Right. And there are new stories from teachers and, and colleagues and students of mine that I think will be right. really gripping to readers. Right. They certainly were for us. Right. Like I said. One of the stories that I, I love and I had sort of forgotten about was a student of mine, and he uh, wrote in his journal uh, that he was e- extraordinarily um, unhappy in school hated high school and did not like English class at all. And he just felt um, that no one understood him. And so one uh, morning he came to English class and there was an exam. And he didn't have a pencil and he didn't have paper and he didn't have a pen. And he decided, fine. And he sat there the entire period and walked out. He never turned in anything. He wouldn't ask for any help. And that's a remarkable example of being really alienated from school. Mm. And the reason that I was reminded is I spent two days in a middle school in my area, and he's the principal. Mm-hmm. Wow. He is the principal. And we were talking. Wow. I was spending time with his teachers. And I said to him, Jonathan, do you remember that journal entry? And he sort of remembered it, and we talked a little bit about it. And again... This is a person, that's his school background, and now he is helping other people. I mean, I just think that is so important. Um, You know, you think that, uh, you know, everyone's successful all the time. They're not. They're not at all. And I ask my students, and I know you ask your students, to think about, try and remember who you were at 14. And if you can't, and if you can't capture that moment and passion and angst and whatever, you probably shouldn't be a teacher. You probably shouldn't because those human beings in front of you have experienced death. They've fallen in love. They've had their hearts broken. They're fearful. They've had great joy. I mean, you've got to give them that and really think about who you were and that will make you so powerful as a teacher. And it doesn't mean, well, you didn't do your homework, that's fine. Uh, I'll just right. pass you. It right. doesn't make Absolutely. any, not at all. But where are you coming from? Who are you as a human being? Um, that is just, I mean, that's the contract. That is the absolute contract. And, and I hope that that, you know, continues on. I think it does, very much so. In the, in the fourth edition, this is a very intimate, personal uh, business. And it's, it's really, it, it's important. Mm. It's important. So there's a section in the book that has been in all three versions before this, too, on the alienated student, Mm -hmm. and and Mm -hmm. Lila brought that concept up already. Right. That, for me, I think was the most difficult chapter. And that story that you wrote, yeah, Yeah. about the student. I mean, we have some tough stories to tell, Mm -hmm. and we have some good ones, too, and some really funny ones. There's a a confession I give about having once wished I brought extra pants to school. Yes, I love that story. I believe that That as a a teaser. Yeah. Yes. Um, it's, uh, yeah. Really? I, I can that feel was, my skin. That was awful. Yeah, well, Leela told yeah. so many yeah. confessional, yeah. you know, self-effacing stories yeah. that yeah. once I started revising this, I realized what I had got myself into, mm-hmm. what I had agreed to. It's like I have to reveal all of these ridiculous... Yeah. And believe me, my career has been one I love Lucy episode after another. So, <laughs> and, that, and now there's proof in text. Thank you, Heinemann, yeah. for, yeah. for documenting yeah. all this. Yeah, that's right. So, but, yeah. but that, that one chapter... Um, we we tell some stories about some really sad cases. I had a student point a gun at me in a class. I taught in an upstate suburban school district. That this was not something that would go on there, and it was pre Columbine, so so it was not an immediate zero tolerance kind of time. Mm-hmm. Um, nobody had ever heard of this thing. It, mm-hmm. it ended up okay, mm-hmm. but it's quite a tale. Right. Um, And there are also stories about students doing remarkably wonderful things. And, you know, 
Lila is talking about you have to be able to relate to those students. So I would say one of the things that I've brought to the text, whether you like it or not, is a 10th grade sense of humor. Yes. And if you can't Definitely. laugh at a fart joke, oh. you maybe shouldn't be teaching 10th grade. Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for adding, adding yeah, that and elevating. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. In yeah. fact, if you ruffle the pages in a particular oh, way, really? it actually makes a sound. Thank so, you. Yeah. Thank you. Don't try Heineman this at home. Okay, I, did, I had no idea. Oh, yeah. One thing I did want to say about making the journey that, that meant so much to me uh, in the beginning, and you know, Ken has been a, a terrific partner uh, in the fourth edition, is I don't think it is enough to talk about authentic assessment of writing and five ways to approach a poem and what to do with a Shakespearean sonnet and how to um, unpack alliteration. From our perspective, Teachers are human beings who coexist with these real people, our students. And so for me, the richness, and maybe that's not very modest, but for me, the depth of making the journey is the context. Who are you? How do you dress? What do you do when this terrible, unexpected thing happens? Mm. Did that ever happen to you? And so Ken tells, and he's got a heartbreaking story about a very affluent student and uh, it went for on for a year. Uh, and every time I talked to the student, the student brought um, uh, his attorney and his mom. I didn't have stories like that. I had other kinds of stories. Yeah. But I think, yes, we're talking about English teaching, but we're also talking about this big sea in which we swim. And if we don't talk about yourself as a human being, as a teacher, and how you interact with these really interesting other people that we're really only telling part of the story. Mm -hmm, yeah. So making the journey, I think, still provides that kind of um, information uh, and, and, and I hope encouragement. We could have written a test prep guide. Yeah, right? sure. I mean, we could have sure. done that, but sure. a you know, good one. making the journey is not about getting students to do well on exams mm -hmm. only. Mm -hmm. It's about everything that a, a teacher has to do. And one of the main problems with this obsession that our field is experiencing on standardized exams mm -hmm. is the fact that it covers so little of what teachers actually do mm -hmm. and need to do mm -hmm. in order to assist student learning. Right. So we try in many chapters of the book to address those other things, including things as simple as how should you dress and as complex as what do you do when a, when a student in your class has a has a serious emergency absolutely, and all of the many, many things in between those two poles. That's right. We also acknowledge, you know, as much as we have differences between mm -hmm. us, mm -hmm. we don't represent a lot of the people who are teaching and learning in right. the country. That there are, um, we've added a chapter to the book that didn't exist before on social justice. Mm -hmm. And that's an important thing absolutely. You know, that I feel really, um, that we both thought was very important to get into the book. Mm -hmm. um, and we both acknowledge that we have limitations in our approach to these things, but actually every teacher has limitations to, to the way they approach some of the very complex issues that are going on uh, in the world around us. Absolutely. And so we, we do things, we, we address uh, the school to prison pipeline, mm -hmm. we address inequities in language ideologies, right. um, and we address some other kinds of social Supporting justice. Supporting transgender students. Absolutely. Right. 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 And, you know, we had recently made gains on LGBT students mm -hmm. and, you know, we hope those don't get rolled back. But, mm -hmm. you know, we so we, we try to take those issues up as well. So, again, it's not a book that has all the answers, but it maybe it's a book that has almost all the questions. Right. My thanks to Leela and Ken for their time today. If you'd like to explore more of their work, we have blogs from both of them on our Medium blog and also on Heinemann.com slash blog. There you'll also find video blogs from the authors as well. If you'd like more information about Making the Journey, you can read a sample chapter and review the beautiful layout of the book and more at Heinemann.com. The book is both funny, touching, and filled with wisdom. We hope you'll check it out. That's all the time we have for today. Be sure to subscribe to the Heinemann Podcast for more, and also be sure to download the Heinemann Teacher Tip app. It's filled with free, quick tips every day. Thanks for listening.